Nebraska, eight and a half point dog against USC. The over under in this game, 50 and a half. Cam, what is your take for us coming into this game? Oh, sad Hasker. Nate's going to love this. And Nate, I heard your voicemail. We heard your voicemail. We can't fit it in. We're, we're trying to get through the rest of these games. But I promise you we heard it. The take. Nebraska is going to win out, and that includes this game against USC, and make a bowl game with Dana Holgerson now as offensive coordinator. I like I the move. Uh, go ahead, Chris. Oh. This is so weird for so many reasons. Dana Holgerson spent most of the season at TCU. He, where he was yep. a consultant. He hasn't been at Nebraska for like, oh, he's been there for like a <laughs> week or two. And so he's call, he's going to call the plays, but this isn't his offense. You're not installing Dana Holgerson's offense and all the, all the keys and all the language and all that stuff. Dana Holgerson has to start calling an offense he just like got a hold of a week ago. So I, this is, I'm going to say no, Nebraska. I, I would never uh, the take that Nebraska is going to win out and make a bowl game based on the last 10, 15 years of history makes me say no, but like Matt Rule has said, he'd like to keep Dana Holgerson as offensive coordinator. I think that's a good idea. Yes. Next year, <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know what it does when you bring in a guy who you just brought him in like a week or two ago, and now is calling the plays. Like that is a big adjustment for someone coming in from the outside. It's very weird to see a coach on two teams. He's coached on two teams during the season. I I don't know if I've ever seen that. Yeah, I Damien, where are you at Chris. on this one? Uh, no, no, I definitely agree with Chris, and it. It makes me question how Matt Rule does things because I looked up his record and in college he's got a record of 47 and 43 and in the NFL it's 11 and 27. So to me that shows that you're not really good at assembling a, a roster, a team, a uh, support staff, really anything because there's so many different parts that come into creating a winning culture and he hasn't really established that too many places. I, mean, I know he had one 11 and 3 season but I mean, his overall record kind of shows. And then with the news that we're hearing about how he's having this guy come in and just be the offensive coordinator at the drop of a hat. I don't know. It makes me it makes me question Matt Rule. I'm, I was never really sold that he's the guy. This def, this decision is definitely a head scratcher for me, but I definitely don't see them winning out and making it to a bowl. Well, I'm a big Matt Rule guy. I think as far as the NFL goes, if you're not given a quarterback, like you're screwed. And I think that you had bad ownership. You never had a quarterback like that situation was doomed from the start. He took over at Temple, which was kind of a disaster, built them up, parlayed that into kind of a weird move for him in the Baylor job, took over one of probably the five or ten worst situations you maybe could have had in college football in the last, what, Chris, 20 years probably, and turned them into a, a New Year's New Year Six team in, you know, was it two or three years? So I I like him as a program builder. I think for me – Building the staff, like Nebraska, when you put that staff together, Nebraska wants to win bad. You're going to have every asset, every single uh, resource that you need to try and win at Nebraska outside of being located in Nebraska and not having a lot of natural access to talent. So when they when he hired Michael Satterfield, I was kind of like, ah. Uh, he was putting the band I, back together. He brought, yeah, he brought like, a lot know. of the guys. All yeah. those guys who were with him at Temple and Baylor, they're with him at, at Nebraska now. Yeah, I was not a huge fan of that. But I think what you have with Dana Holgerson is, one, you know the coordinator market is going to be very, very interesting this year. And so you get in early as a guy that you know you want for 2025. And we'll see what, what you do this year, how much of Holgerson's concepts that you can filter into this offense. But the hallmark of his offense is, is he makes it very easy for his quarterbacks. And when you have a guy like Dylan Riola who, you know, the potential is off the charts there. But you watch them this year, man, it looked hard. Everything they were doing just looked like – this is really hard for him. And if you can make it really easy and say, hey, you know, we're going to switch. We're going to have half field reads and we're going to have these concepts and then your first read's going to be open on half the time. Yeah, OK, maybe you're not getting super prepared for the NFL necessarily by doing that. But, you know, you can develop and we'll see what that gets into. But you got to get some confidence. You got to be able to make some throws, find an open receiver, hit that. And I think making things easier, making the picture clearer for Dylan Riola. I think we'll have to be a situation that lets his natural physical skills shine a little bit more. So I like this move. We'll see what it means for 2024. I mean, it can't be worse, especially the last few weeks. The offense has fallen off a cliff, and they've got enough talent to be much better than they are. And I think, too, don't forget Dana Holgerson. Not, I mean, he's got air raid, air raid background, but he wants to run the ball, too. We've seen that pretty consistently through his time, and they've got good backs there. I like Dante Doddell. Like, the personnel there is much better than what the offense has been. So I think at, at, at worst, 
it's a solid improvement. Well, we all, we also don't know, by the way, if Dylan Royal is playing in this game. He got hurt yes. against UCLA. Mm-hmm. Uh, as of recording, Matt Rule says it's a wait and see. You know, we'll find out. So he's banged up as well. The Heinrich Carberry experience, that's not a roller coaster you, you want to be on. And we're going to see Jaden Maiava get a shot here at USC. I'm really interested to see how that goes. Look for a lot of QB run. I really want to see that, and, and, and we'll see. And I think also it's worth noting – this is a big week for Lincoln Rally at USC. Not only can you finish the season and have some good juju going into the offseason, but maybe you want to keep Juju because Juju Lewis, a lot of smoke around possibly losing him. He's been in the boat since August. Coach Prime, Dion, listen, he's flipped bigger recruits before. The Travis he Hunter flip. Be there. Yeah, the, the Dion I don't ain't going to so. be there. I don't think so either. But all I'm saying is if you could flip the, the, Juju, that, 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 that might change the arithmetic of making a future decision. If you've got a guy – like right now, Colorado has no plan at quarterback beyond Shador Sanders. There is nobody behind him. They were playing a walk-on last year. Ryan Staub, like, you know, he's just kind of there. You got Juju Lewis. I, I, I'm with you, Dan. I think generally he's not going to be there. But if you get Juju Lewis in the boat and all of a sudden you got some momentum – I'm I'm thinking maybe a little differently if I'm Dion at the, that point. The the some of the recruiting experts have predicted a flip to Colorado, but mm-hmm. after those after those predictions, news came out of a visit to Georgia. So either way, it's going to be very hard for USC to hold on to him. I think, and if you if you lose him on top of the season you're having, then you start to really kind of worry about where this program is going under Lincoln Riley because it's not going yeah. in, a, in, a, in a good direction. And even at, at Oklahoma, he took the step up when he got the job, but then it kind of progressively wasn't as good. The offensive line situation was a mess toward the end, and that's what Brent Venables walked into when he took over. So this is a weird game. It feels like both teams are playing for next year with the mm-hmm. OC change and with the quarterback change, but also they need to win this game to get to a bowl game. So yeah, it's a it's a weird the vibes around this whole game are really, really weird.